In lecture, we have learned about atoms and molecules. Now we turn our attention to what happens when atoms and molecules react in chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are when one or more substances turn into new substances. In order to show this process, scientists have developed a system to show this change in chemical equations. These chemical equations use chemical symbols to show what happens during the chemical reactions. Experiment 3 is dedicated to showing you uh, chemical reactions and helping you write balanced chemical equations. In order to do this, you'll observe 10 different reactions set up at 9 stations. The 9 stations correspond to the 9 reactions in your laboratory manual. Each of the stations will be set up in hoods around the laboratory, and each of the stations will contain all of the reagents and equipment you need to complete each reaction. The unit partner will move from station to station and completing each one. Now for a couple of tips to help this run faster. First, you don't need to go in order. You can actually start, for instance, at station number 7 and then move to station number 1. Uh, this is because some reactions, such as 1, 7, and 8, happen pretty fast, and reactions 2 and 9 are actually a little bit slower. In addition, some student groups will work faster than others, and there's going to be a lot of people in the room, so just be flexible and move from station to station as an opening happens. Second, when you get to the station, look on the bottom. There should be a chemical name and symbol for all the starting materials, and this will help things go quicker and help you see how scientists write chemical names and formulas. And third, when you get to a station, uh, do the reaction as suggested in the laboratory manual, make observations, clean up, and then move on. There's no need to try to balance the equation while you're at the station. Uh, in fact, most students will need to take time towards the end of lab or even after lab to write a complete balanced equation. So those are some tips for now. What we're going to do in the next couple of minutes is we're going to give you a couple of demonstrations uh, to make this lab run more smoothly. Now a word about safety. First, safety glasses are the most important safety device. Never work without your glasses. And please remember to wear appropriate clothing to lab. Now for safety concerns related to this experiment. All of the reactions will produce waste and that waste should go into waste beakers. Each station will contain a beaker marked as hazardous waste. Put all of the waste generated in that beaker. The beakers may contain a plastic bag that acts as a liner. That is okay. Simply pour the waste into the plastic bag. Bunsen burners will be used in this experiment and during future experiments. In this segment, you will see how to light a burner. First, a mixture of oxygen from air and natural gas is used in the laboratory burner. The needle valve on the bottom of the burner controls the gas flow. The dial on the valve can be shut to stop the flow of gas or it can be open to let gas in. Here you can see how the height of the flame can be raised or lowered with this valve. Next, the barrel of the burner adjusts the amount of oxygen in the mixture. The flame should be a blue flame. So if the flame is yellow or orange, adjust the barrel until a blue flame is present. Simply turn the barrel to adjust the airflow. The Bunsen burners in experiment three will be used inside the hoods. There is a gas connection on either side of the hood that is blue. Connect the tubing there. To light the burner, turn on the gas via the blue knob labeled gas. Make sure the needle valve is open and use a striker or lighter to light the burner. One final note, in future experiments, the Bunsen burner will be used at the benches. The operation of the Bunsen burner is the same. The supply will come from the nozzles on the gas bench, however. Look for the nozzles that have a blue cap that has the word gas printed on them. Plug in the tubing there. Open the handle on the nozzle about 80 degrees and then light the Bunsen burner. During reactions 4 and 5, splint tests will be used to detect the presence of hydrogen or oxygen gas. Uh, these tests are performed with the help of a thin, dry piece of wood, the splint. The splint is either a glowing splint or a burning splint, which we will demonstrate. By simply lighting the splint on fire, you created a burning splint. If you blow out the, the fire, you'll notice that the splint glows red, and that is a glowing splint. First, uh, to demonstrate the use of glowing splints. The glowing splints help detect the presence of oxygen. In this demonstration, the reaction is started by mixing the reagents in a test tube. 
You can cover the ne neck of the test tube with your thumb for a little bit to help concentrate the oxygen. And then we want to insert a glowing splint into the neck. What you should see is if you have oxygen that is present, is that the glowing splint, which is glowing red, will glow brighter or read light. And you can see there it has relit. You can even stick the splint, the glowing splint, back into the neck of the test tube a second time and you should see the same thing. Burning splints detect the presence of hydrogen by causing the hydrogen to react in a dramatic manner. In this example, we'll mix the reagents in a test tube. Then a second test tube is inverted over the first uh, test tube to capture the gas being produced. You should leave the top test tube over the first one for about two minutes to help concentrate the hydrogen. Then after about two minutes, one partner should light the splint while the second partner inserts the burning splint into the neck of the test tube and see what happens. Uh, the sounds you hear will either be very loud and sharp or it could be a low pop. In any case, a sound would be a positive test for the presence of hydrogen. One final note. Your textbook can be very helpful in this experiment. Specifically, sections 2.7 and 2.8 are very good for helping you identify ions and for naming compounds, while sections 3.1 and 3.2 are very good for identifying reaction types and for balancing chemical equations. So you might want to look at that before coming to lab, and you might want to use it after lab to help you write a balanced chemical equations. So remember to bring your laboratory safety glasses, and we'll see you in lab.